you can be anywhere in the world. Put a product up and make sales. So Amazon Influencer has recently started inviting Amazon Influencers to the Amazon Merch Program. And as part of that, I wanted to bring on my friend RJ Martinez because he is an expert and has been in the Merch Program for a long time. So has a lot of wisdom for those of us who maybe are just getting started. RJ, thanks for joining me. What's going on? Thank you for having me on, Liz. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. I'm so glad that you were available to do this because as like this announcement came out and now we're starting to see people like applying, but they don't really know. And they have a lot of questions and you've been very gracious to let me tag you in a bunch of these places. People are like, yeah. where do we go? I'm like, just go check out RJ. Like he will yeah. have the answers to your questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, just it's uh give you a little bit of background because I'm kind of like doing it the opposite way. I was right. in Amazon merch first and then I kind of seen the concept and the idea behind it. And I'm like, dude, this is like right up my alley. This is like what I do. So if you're unaware and kind of give you the bigger picture, it's about like, so you're reviewing a product, right? Or mm -hmm. let's, let's go this way. So you're, you're creating a design for Amazon merch. Okay. You're okay. creating a design for Amazon merch. You put that on a product and give you an insight. I have a few different products that have done over $40,000. Okay. And Yay. that's in ro that's royalties. Uh, if you want to be like, uh, do like the, your YouTube video, or if I want to do my YouTube video, it'd be a hundred thousand dollars in revenue, right? right. Uh, so, but it's forty. It's like close to like forty-four thousand, and then like another one's like forty-one, and then I have several thirty thousand, twenty thousand. So you're putting the design up on Amazon, right? So Amazon merch. You're creating the design. You're doing the research, and obviously you're checking for trademarks, copyrights, and then you mm -hmm. put that design up live on Amazon, and Amazon prints and ships the product for you to the customer. Okay. Excellent. Only thing you do is uploading the design to the platform. Mm -hmm. You don't take care of no customer service, no inventory. You don't have to worry about if your damn ink runs out of, uh, your printer runs out of ink. You don't have to worry about uh, inventory for uh, t-shirts, right? If you have the black extra large, you don't have to worry about none of that or black medium, black, small, like stuff mm -hmm. like that. That takes a lot of, that takes brain power from your day to do any, any of that stuff. But this right here, it's like, you can be anywhere in the world, put a product up and make sales. And it sounds all nice and easy. I would like it is easy. That's easy. That part's all easy, right? But then the research part, a lot of people don't have an understanding. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's more competition once people start to understand that. Yeah. Um, but one thing I recommend is you have to force a, the sale, especially with on Amazon, because once you start to rank and get to the front page for your product, that's when a lot of the organic traffic comes in. I'm not just gonna put a damn design up on Amazon. It's like, okay, cool. I'm on page seven. Hopefully, I get a sale. Like. Come on, dude. Like no one does that. It's like, not stop. Things. Yeah. It's <laughs> not, let's be, be realistic here. So yeah. it is, it is, a, it is simple and it is easy because I have a few ideas right now that I'm creating that are pretty cool and I'm excited to, you know, put them live on there, but yep. I'm also think about promoting your product to make sales. Yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of products can you do in merch? Uh, you can do. So from standard t-shirts to pop sockets, to throw pillows, to tote bags, they're adding, when I first started, I think there was three products. Yeah. Okay. I, this was back in 2017. So I've been doing it for a, a while. Um, and the way that I literally, this is how I made my first sale. I, I went to Fiverr. I asked someone, Hey, can you give me 10, 10 designs? And I paid for them. And then I paid for the 10 designs. I was doing Amazon FBA at the time doing uh, mm -hmm. retail arbitrage and then online arbitrage and, you know, going to stores and stuff and buying stuff. And what I did was put those designs up and then I just left it there for three or four months. And then I came back and I was like, what up? I got sales. I was like, dude, <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't even, I didn't, I forgot about it because mm -hmm. it was, it's so convenient just to put it up there. And then I'm working on my other business. I came back and I was like, oh, I see the idea here. I was like, maybe let me see if I can do $500 a month. And mm. then I started doing 500. Then I started doing thousand. Then I started doing 2000 then 3000 and 5,000 and 6,000 and you know, so on and so like 8,000 and best month ever was like 12,000 for the month. Nice. And, and that that's, a, but then now I'm just averaging anywhere between it average. It can, it can be anywhere between five to $12,000 a month, you know, I have 10,000, let's say 10,000. Super predictable. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause you're in, you're in, you're in retail, right? Like I've, yeah. I've worked retail my whole life. And not everyone wants a shirt every day, right? Right. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. So you have to understand like research, demand, mm -hmm. um, competition, all that stuff. So you got to keep all that in mind. Um, but for the most part, it's been steady making sales. I make sales every single day. 
Um, but just the idea of that when I first started was there was only three products. Now we have, you know, the standard t-shirt with, we had like, I think it was like three to five colors at a time. Now mm -hmm. that's like, we have, we can pick over like, I think 10 colors at a time. Um, and we have Heather grays, whites, mm -hmm. blacks, uh, Navy blue, cranberry, all, all these different colors, Kelly green. It's like stuff like that. Like you would never be like, you just watch it grow and you're like, okay, yeah. now it's like, it's, it's cool to see that you can put these designs on any, pretty much any popular color. Yeah. And Are you doing any of the international marketplaces too? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Actually, when it was available in the UK. Uh-huh. Okay. There's a UK. There's what? <clears throat> I can't think of that. The ones I have to pull up the account. Let me see. There there's is. UK, the UK. There's Germany. Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and J Japan. Oh, the big five, the EU five or whatever they call them. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I put up a design that's been consistently selling in the US, but I put it up over there in the UK. And it's probably one of the first designs, but it's a bestseller over there in the niche. So <laughs> like when when stuff comes like that, like you think mm -hmm. about it, like, okay, if I'm the first person up in that niche, right? right. You're obviously gonna get that traction, get that sales. So you're right. taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you get that opportunity and it presents itself. You just you you hop on and just go get to work, start getting to work. And that's a that's the result of that. It's a successful, yeah. you know, design in the niche and it's the best seller and it's, it's consistently selling out every day. And it's like, mm -hmm. it makes like a, I think it's like an $8, $9 royalty. Okay. And it sells like That's four to five times a day and it's pretty cool. So it just, it, and then some days like it will get closer to like holiday seasons and stuff like that. It'll spike up a lot of the designs, a lot of sales spike during the holiday season. And we all know that as Amazon sellers in general, yeah. um, which is really cool. Yeah. It's, it's fun to me, like more and more, not more and more. I think it's fun just every time I meet people who live and breathe Amazon, it's like, uh -huh. oh, I'm FBA. I used to do retail arbitrage. I'm in the influencer program. I do merch. I do, uh -huh. you know, KDP. It's like, yeah, it's just like once you're in, it's like an addiction. You're like, yeah. all right, let's go. How many other ways can I make money yeah. on Amazon right now? <laughs> I, I don't get me wrong, too. There's something like, like all right, I need a damn break. I'm done with this. Uh, I'm not talking about Amazon at all this week. <laughs> oh, you sell on Amazon? I'm like, oh, no, dude, get away from me. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> am I not? I'm off Amazon this week. This is not my Amazon week. I make YouTube videos. This is my YouTube video week. I'm a different person this week, so. I don't know. Oh, well, so as they've opened up merch for Amazon influencers, we've got now obviously a lot of new people who are learning about it and want to know about it. Like if you were talking to somebody who's just getting started and just learning, like what would your top two tips for them be as they like kind of like wade in? So as far as um, Amazon merch, correct? For merch, yes. Okay. Um, so for Amazon merch, one of the things that I just highly recommend is just understanding the rules of there's, cause there's, there's a, so, some, there's a few different Amazon merch, but then there's like different platforms that you can go on to and sell like Etsy. You can go on Redbubble, okay. T public, and there's a few out there, but as far as Amazon and every single platform, this pretty much applies to it's understanding the rules. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's very important as far as like, it can be a little weird with like trademarks and, you know, copyrights and stuff like yeah. that. You want to be very careful that you're not ripping from like right now, like Taylor Swift is like a big thing. And yeah. I'm like, where does this, this, where did this saying even come from? It's like, oh, it's part of one of her songs. I'm like, yeah, 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 bro. Like, don't do that. I was like, you can't do that. <laughs> That's and, how you get banned. <laughs> uh -huh. I had someone that uh, reached out to me on Instagram the other day, had like 600 sales. And I'm like, all right, what's this guy doing? I was like, I was like, he's 600 sales in one day. He's doing something. And then he messaged me like two days later. He's like, Hey, I got my account suspended. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, mm, wonder what you were doing. He's like, is there anywhere I can do an appeal and get it back? And I'm like, oh, I like, usually when they do that, like only time I ever seen people get their account back is if they made a mistake. Right. And I was like, oh, I honestly wanted to ask him like, let me see your design and see what you're doing. But I was like, ah, oh, I kind of, I have an idea. And I'm not mean to just, it just, that's part of the game. Like if you yeah. you go that way, I know people that do that and, they, and they're, they're playing that little thin line between, you know, copyright and trademark and just switching yeah. words around. It's as long as you like understand the rules, but like on certain platforms, if they don't like your design and, and they see that you're okay, this is, this is infringing on, let's mm -hmm. say like Taylor Swift saying, and you just switched up one or two words. If they don't like it, they're going to take off the design and maybe go take further action on you. And that's right. no, that's part of the game. That's normal. That's it just, but like with me, I try not to play those type of games. I'm more yeah. like, 
I'll create a design in a niche where like, I'm like, cool, this is a, this is a cool animal design. So um, understanding the rules is like number one. And then number mm. two, it's like research. A lot of people, there's like, they have issues with this, with research and understanding ideas. Mm. I see new ideas all the time. Like when I'm on social media, uh, scrolling up on Facebook, scrolling yeah. up on and any of the threads, comments, uh, any sports, any sports threads, any, any, mm. anything you could possibly think of pumpkin spice right now is like a big thing. Mm. I don't like pumpkin spice. It's not a big thing to me. Mm. So I can see like anti pumpkin spice shirts doing good and they're starting to, be, to become more and more popular. Right. So that's a good idea. So like, that's a perfect example of, okay, this is trending right now, but yeah. like, what about the people don't, that don't like it? Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, like I rather have a, anything pumpkin spice, I'd rather have a tamale and that's just from my culture, right? I'd rather have a tamale <laughs> than a pumpkin spice. So that's a good a design idea. And I was like, you know what, let me create a design like that. And I think it's a cool design. It makes me smile, makes me laugh. And I think it will be a good design for someone to wear or on a t-shirt. Right. And just stuff like that, just understanding research and staying ahead of the competition. Right. Because at the end of the day, if you're, if I'm doing Amazon merch and you're doing Amazon merch, we're both competing with each other. Yeah. And one way is to be the first in the niche or just understand the research in a you know a, a trending topic or like a, a ever ever any type of evergreen which would be like evergreen would be like baseball baseball's on right now so it's going you know it's a trending it's trending right now more than ever but like obviously yeah. when it's off season it's not going to be as trending as much but it's still there so. yeah that's so fun and actually i'm going to link in the notes to some of your research videos because as soon as they released the invite so i've had a merch account for years i have some weird og Amazon status where I've been an affiliate for a long time, even though I didn't have the three required sales at any given point in time. Yeah. I've had merch, not done much with it. Um, but as soon as they like did the invite for like Amazon influencers to join the merch program, like I hopped over to your channel and was like watching some of your like most recent research videos. Mm -hmm. So I'll link to a couple in the notes as well, because I find them incredibly fascinating. Like when you're just like riffing ideas mm. about like how to come up with new ideas. It's really fun to watch. Yeah, no, um, that's actually like something like, like almost like it's almost like a little podcast type of idea because I'm just like, <laughs> it is right off the top of my head because I, I see the idea and I'm just like, this is a good idea. I see what they're doing. Okay. The concept, but mm -hmm. it's not, oh yeah, I'm going to give you this and this is what you should do type of thing. It's like, obviously you got to think, take a little bit of brain knowledge, yeah. brain power. Yeah, and come up with your own idea. I don't recommend you copying other people's designs. Mm -mm. That piss, that pisses people off. Yeah, like if you copy anything <laughs> from anyone, it's like this is one thing that like a lot of the creative artists and designers, mm -hmm. they're how would I put this? They're copying in a way where they understand the demand. Like, mm -hmm. like it's like eighty percent of it's like copied, and they switch twenty percent or. 70% is copied and they switch 30%, right? Yeah. And I get that type of concept. Um, and it does make sense, right? Because it's like, if it's working, if it's working for them, but if you put your own flip on it, right? It's, yeah. that just, that's always been that way for years. That just, years and years and years. Like, but unless you're doing your first, like, you're the first person to invent this and here and do this. And it's, <laughs> I don't know if it, I, I, it's a, that's a big argument right there. Yeah. I know that is, but it just changing, changing a good amount of a design and try to make it your own as best as possible is something that obviously I recommend, but my goal is to, as a, as a well, what would you call me? Like a, I, I guess a, a t-shirt designer is to create something that is funny. Also mm -hmm. the best design inside of a niche yeah okay like and it's challenging definitely challenging if you think about it because if you're out there copying designs pixel for pixel and then uploading them it's like eh. mm. and that's that's an issue too in, in the space is like people are doing that because yeah. it doesn't take any much work it doesn't take much work to do that they're not right they're not they're not taking their time and then it pisses other people off that mm -hmm. are actually taking the time and you know it took me two yeah. hours to come up with this design concept and this this damn guy over here just used the automated software and ripped my design off the <laughs> internet and then uploaded it. And then it prevents other artists from creating their own work and creating their own design on the platforms because they messed it up for other people. And then you go into that. Um, it's like that little your own space type of thing. I'm not putting my designs up on the internet because everyone's going <laughs> to yeah. copy it. And I'm like, God damn. <laughs> I do think there's 
it kind of doesn't matter where you are on the internet. Like if you make your money there, like if you're doing something good and people know it's working, like they're going to go rip you off. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is like some level of that. Um, but I do wonder like about the amount of brain power that it takes to go find what's working for other people, recreate it, upload it and know that like at some point your account can be banned. Like it can all go away overnight. And then you have to go brainstorm a whole other business model to rip off somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Like wouldn't you just be better off like spending the time doing the design research and like I mm -hmm. watched you do one on Twitter where you're like, oh, this is trending. And this mm -hmm. person did a shirt from this thing and like whatever. It's like, oh, within like two hours of watching you do that, I was like, I probably had three different design ideas just like mm -hmm. bouncing around in my head. Cause I was like, oh, I got, okay, that makes much more sense to me now yeah. that you do it. So it is always kind of funny. I just think people like want to spend their emotional energy in the wrong way. Like, I don't want to mm -hmm. go copy yours. Like yeah. also emotional energy and time that it takes me. I'd rather go like think about my own and then like work on something, you know? Well, as a, like a seller, right. And it's like coming up with a design idea. Right. And then creating the design idea. And then once it sells, you get like, once I get a first sale, like on something that I came up with my own idea, I'm like, cool, dude, yeah. that's freaking, that was dope, dude. I did it. I was like, all right, now let's do it again. <laughs> let's do it again. Yeah. Then, you know, you think about it that way. You kind of break it down like that. Right. It's a little bit more easier to think about it like that. Cause if you yeah. do that 10 times, right. Mm -hmm. 10 times a month that can be that can be anywhere let's sell it so or standard royalty i think on a uh, 19.99 t-shirt it's like 487 so keep in mind too with certain costs at one point that was a seven dollar royalty right okay so i was there when it was like seven eight dollars and then all of a sudden i've just seen it just kind of just decrease slowly but keep in mind guys this is this part of the business because they have overhead we ain't got no damn overhead <laughs> like you know what i mean so <laughs> that right there once you understand that concept right there I take advantage of that that's something that i've and that's where the amazon video mm -hmm. influencer came in i was like so cool so if i create a video and it's up there and it stays up there and i can stick making sales for the whole year mm -hmm. it's like okay cool this is right up my alley this is no brainer like i'm gonna take advantage of this yep. this is my time this is my opportunity yep. and i'm gonna do more of it okay so just taking that same concept and apply it to anything else and if you see something else that happens right Let's say Amazon merch is not there or, you yeah. know, um, Amazon video influence is not there. And then you have the idea of, you know, creating your own book like on KDP or mm -hmm. or that's not even working for you. You know, you see the opportunity with AI and then you can, you know, you can create two or three blog posts a day and you want to, you know, start repping out more blog posts in a day. And then next, thing you know, you start to get traction to your blogs because of the new trending pieces of online business out there. Right. Yeah. There's always an opportunity. Actually, I'm going to grab something. Because I have a question for you. Yeah. So my first piece of merch that I produced when this all started to kind of like pop back up uh -huh. is my banana approved video, <laughs> my banana approved <laughs> pillow, which I adore. Um, but I have a question for you because I created a an influencer video mm -hmm. for the pillow. And then we got into a conversation in the Facebook group. And now I don't know. So I was going to ask you. Can we create influencer content for our own merch products? So that's a good question because I think that's still the rule. Like you cannot review your own products, right? I think, I mean, I don't know. I, but, in my mind when it started, I was like, oh, that's different because it's influencer content. But now I don't know because you said that. And I know that's the case for sellers, FBA sellers. Mm-hmm. But, but I we so, so I can't leave a review on my own product on right. on Amazon. So if I purchase my shirt, if I purchase my shirt or purchase my throw pillow, right. I can't go in there and say, "Hey, five star." And right. uh, this is a really cool product. And then yeah. um, the print's all messed up. And sh <laughs> <That's kidding. laughs> yeah, and now, like, <laughs> now, uh, so you can't do that right there. Right. Now this is where it gets confusing, because I consider that still a review. It's a video review, right? right? In my opinion. But there, this is a, a really popular topic. It's gonna be talked about even more. Yeah, is the crossover. So your Amazon's allowing us to, and this is weird because Amazon does certain things like this, right. um, allowing us to get approved for an Amazon merch. So you, you're on Amazon Video Influencer, but then you go approve for you get approved for an Amazon merch um, account. So you're saying basically you just gave me the approval because I have this account. Does that mean I can actually put on my own shirts and do reviews right. on them? Is 
I think they're going to change that soon. Mm -hmm. There has to be some type of updated, man. If not, if they haven't done that already, but they need to update that because it's, it doesn't make sense in my opinion. Yeah. I think That's I agree with you. I think it's currently gray because they have not defined it. In my mind, mm -hmm. shoppable content, shoppable videos that Amazon influencers create are different than like customer reviews, written reviews or stars. Um, and they're kind of blurring that line right now. Mm -hmm. So like when you look at creator university for the influencers, like uh, in the merch section, it says you are your own brand ambassador. So you can go create content to drive people to it. Now they're talking about driving people from your Instagram, your TikTok, mm -hmm. your YouTube channel, creating content and driving them to Amazon. Mm -hmm. What they haven't talked about is if you can or should create on-site content for your merch. So I think mm -hmm. that's where the blur is to your point. Like they just need to update terms mm -hmm. of service. I may email them and just see like what they say. Yeah. And hopefully get someone that under, uh, knows uh, exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, like, so I actually am going to put this up here for us because I put it in the notes. Uh -huh. If you're an Amazon influencer and you apply to the merch program, they actually have said if you don't get approved to email them so that they know that you're part of the influencer program as part of the process. Yeah, that'd be nice. I know, right? <laughs> so it's back hard. in my day. <laughs> I have a portfolio. Yeah. My approval took six months for merch. Yeah. It was so long, but I feel like I'm always mm -hmm. at that though. Like my approval for on-site with influencer took four weeks and like this, now it's like three days. <laughs> So like th that's that's crazy because I got mine within the week too. But one thing that I've learned like from the very beginning because I missed the automatic approval approval back in I think it was 2017, 2016 mm -hmm. uh, for Amazon Merch or Merch by Amazon back in the day. It was called Merch by Amazon back in the day. Now it's Amazon Merch on demand. But yeah. I missed the approval by the a day because I was like busy with work and stuff like that and just being a little knucklehead. And I finally went and approved and was like, oh, yeah, okay, we're looking at your invitation and we'll give you an uh, update as soon as it's available. And it took about three months for me to get approved. But the day before, everyone was getting approved automatically. So with that being said, you have, when you see opportunities like that, just do it and come back to it later on if you have to. Like yeah. if you see it like oh, that day, okay, take a damn break at your job or take a break of your business or with your day-to-day -day stuff, take a break real fast, yeah. go to the restroom, get on the damn phone, sit on the toilet, whatever you do, and mm -hmm. and and try to get approved ASAP. And then come back to it later on when you have time, maybe in two weeks or a week, whatever it is, and do it that way. Because it took yeah. me three week, three months, and I didn't know if I was going to get approved. And there's a lot of people that do not get approved. Yeah, which is weird. So I actually wrote this down. So if you have not been to Creator University and you are an influencer, if you Google Amazon mm -hmm. Influencer Creator University, it will take you there. Well, then there's a, an earnings section and then merch on demand. And then it will walk you through the entire process of what it takes. Like it will tell you like link here, apply here. And then it will tell you like if you, I can't remember what the exact verbiage is, but basically like if you don't get an approval, email us. And that's the email that they give is the merch by Amazon at amazon.com to let them know that you're an influencer because, and I just cannot say this enough for people, Amazon is so siloed intentionally so it's part of their business model mm -hmm. but the people in the merch section most likely do not have an active database of influencers who are approved for the amazon influencer program so mm -hmm. that's why they're asking you to email them if you don't get that approval but i think it's a pretty fascinating add to the influencer mm -hmm. space that's that's cool because it's like another way to get approved for your merch by amazon account yes okay and i and and I think that's 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 like the first time I've ever heard anything like that. Because, like you said, because at the end of the day, Amazon's a business, and they're trying to protect themselves as much as possible. Yeah. So, with stuff like that that they're sharing with us, they're kind of like, it feels like a more of a personal level type of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, if you do this and you let us know, we're most likely going to approve you. They're not saying it's going to be automatic, but they're saying yeah. just mm -hmm. do this. But if you're going out of your way to email them, right, that's a sign of like, okay, he's okay, approved, mm -hmm. approved, he or she's approved, and boom. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So I have a question for you about pricing because you mentioned like 1999 and it's like a 467, you know, profit for you. 
Do you usually stick when you price your products? Do you normally stick to like the recommended or are there times that you make changes to the product price? Mm. So there was a last time I did this test was in 2019, 2018. Okay. Um, I was, a, I would always, I was always a big fan of price low. And then uh, mm -hmm. as it starts to get traction to the algorithm, depending oh, on the okay. holiday. So let's say like, for example, Halloween, if I have a t-shirt design, if you price low, it's always, it's, excuse me. It's always going to make sales. So it's always going to make sales based off of um, the, the pricing low because it's going to make more sales. So right. as yeah. far as instead of one sale a day is going to make two sales a day instead of two sales a day is going to make four sales a day. It, Cause that's just the way it is. It's priced real low yeah. and it's going to get more traction. Okay. Now, if you're depends, like there's a different strategy. If you're running ads, I have people that say price low and then they'll run ads to it to mm -hmm. spike that more, um, that sales velocity and get it going because the algorithm, you know, tricking the algorithm. The next thing you know, when Halloween comes around, you're pushed on that front page because mm -hmm. of the sales velocity, right? right? And then I have some people that will price low and then go price to like the market, which will be like $15.99, $16.99. And then like the last week or a few days of shipping, they'll go to $19.99. Okay. okay. Um, it all depends. There's so many different strategies on this. Um, yeah. one thing I've tested out was just like, if I'm not going to run ads to the product, I will put it at a lower price. Mm -hmm. I put it at cost and just let it get traction. Then it starts making daily sales yeah. and then I'll just up it to like the, you know, competition. But I have, um, products where they'll make sales organically at 1999, mm -hmm. 1699, 1499. I'll have designs that will, will take off. I haven't seen like some of the catalog. They do some re weird stuff with the Amazon merch catalog from like 27, I can tell because I've been in it for a while. Right. And I'll, all of a sudden I have a design to start taking off. I'm like, dude, where does the design even come from? And I'm like, look, it's like 2017 uploaded. And I'm like, I forgot about this. Let me go see if I have ad, uh, ad, ads going to it. And I'm just like, dude, I don't even have ads running to this. So I'm just like, hmm, hmm. what do I do? So I'm yeah. just like, you know what I mean? It's like, just don't touch it. Or let yeah. it go. Cause I don't want to mess with nothing. And then I was like, right. oh, I'm just, I'll, I'll let it go and just let's see what happens. And the next, you know, it turns into a bestseller. Um, I had a few shirts where de depending an event in the year. Mm -hmm. um, so like anything we're protesting, usually I try to stay out of that oh. stuff, protesting. But if I'm in an evergreen niche, mm -hmm. um, sort of political protesting, I, I hate you type stuff or, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I hate you or this is wrong. This is, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. I try to have fun with it, right? Bring yeah. some, like good energy to it. But yeah. sometimes like, yeah, these people need t-shirts because they're protesting. They look like shit. <laughs> they need to look my <laughs> <laughs> they, they, this, this is a horrible design. You, need, I to to the one place. <laughs> you need to go home and change your shirt and go hold your sign back up, dude. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But um, I was like, okay, they need, that's another thing too. I get confused. I get it, a brand and stuff like that. But some of these people like, the shirt designs just like you got to help them out because it's just like it's horrible. And these yeah. people need T-shirts if they're going to be believing in something that they believe in. Mm -hmm. And I've 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 done a few T-shirt designs where they just they go viral yeah. and they'll make seven thousand dollars. That one design will make seven thousand six thousand dollars that month. That's it's amazing. just because understanding mm -hmm. what people want and then boom, creating it. But for yeah. the most part, I, I try to stay into the funny stuff, funny yeah. Christmas puns, uh, Thanksgiving, Halloween. I just try to make fun of it, like fun with it. Yeah. And then create like a cool design for someone, like if they're at a family event or if they're going trick or treating on the street yeah. and they're like, Hey, that's a cool shirt. Or, you know, in the, at the mall, that's a cool shirt. Mm -hmm. Like stuff like that. I try to stay in there, but if I see a trend and I'm like, okay, cool. Let me jump on this. <laughs> let me see what I can do. You know what I mean? Uh huh. The video so. I watched of yours was when, um, and I will give our disclaimer. We are not giving opinions or political leanings on this. We are talking about the trend and the merch that comes from it. So I think you gave something pretty similar in your video, but just yeah. calling that out. I, the video of yours that I watched was right when um, Trump's mugshot had come mm -hmm. out and you were like tracking what people were doing with the mugshot in merch. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really funny to watch. You're like, and here in this Twitter thread, like, this is what this guy's, oh, this is a merch. This guy has, like, got to uh -huh. drop the link to, like, his shirt in the, like, thread, and it was trending and everything yeah. else. I mean, like, it's pretty funny. But from that, then watching, like, it was probably, like, the next week of, like, just kind of world events where I was mm -hmm. like, oh, there's yeah. merch in there. Like, people yeah. are designing, hopefully, and making money off of, like, yeah. 
No, uh, that's another thing too. Just like when it comes to any of this stuff, keep, keep, keep the, unless, unless you have your own brand and you're like your brand ambassador for your brand, stuff like that. And you know, you, you, you have your own crowd going, your own audience going. Um, it's more about understanding, you know, the trend and, and this understanding demand. And you're yeah. like, okay, cool. Like this, like that Donald Trump mugshot shirt, yeah. that thing went crazy. And he, and I'm pretty sure he wanted it to do that, right? Yeah. And that image go crazy and viral all over the internet because yeah. he knows that he's going to take that, right? What he did was take that culture from the 80s and the 90s and brought it back. And, you yeah. know, who who are going to vote for? He, that's what he did. And I can see yeah. that. And I was like, that's what he did. And I'm like, what a, this is smart. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's pulling a Tupac and Biggie and going to jail, coming out with their new rap album, right? <laughs> yeah, and I see what he's doing. And I was like, yeah. Thing. He just related to all the people in like the lower income related to the people in the middle class. And mm -hmm. now, you know what I mean? That right there is just taking over the world. It was like a like, specific. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, dude, that's, that's smart. But at the end of the day, I know there's, that's just, that's just the understanding it, the concept of it, what he did. Yeah. Okay. And it's not like, Oh yeah, I'm going to vote for him. I'm going to do this. It's not, that's not saying that it's saying right. that that's what he did. And if you don't yeah. see that, I'm just like, don't do that. They'll just have the bigger picture, see what you the opportunity is, and mm -hmm. see what you what you can do and make money with it. They can yeah. do it the right way. Do it the right way. So with that too, is like I wasn't gonna take the image. I went and recreated my own because mm -hmm. for my understanding, as long as they're running for president or and or they're doing any, they're like a public figure, yeah. and you can create t-shirt designs around that. Now it gets a little confusing because Donald Trump is he ha Trump has his own uh own brand too, as well, as far as clothing. Right. Yeah. But technically, that's supposed to overwrite that from my understanding because it should be fair play. Um, but that's why another thing, too, I really don't go into the political niche that much because I'm just like, eh. Yeah, okay. there's a lot there. There's I'm, a about to get, I'm about to get cussed out in the thread and not even do nothing. I know. <laughs> this is not a political opinion. We're just talking about the merch and the marketing behind it. Um, <laughs> the one that I um, I kept thinking about was the fight that happened like shortly after that with the chair on the dock. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. 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 I, I actually seen, I'm like, what the hell are these guys doing, dude? I know. Like I kept whole bra. chair merch to come out like, uh -huh. because yeah. I was like, this is just a, you know, waiting to happen. Like mm -hmm. here's your chair, whatever the case was, but like I was watching for that. And so <laughs> I did then see within a couple of days, a couple merch shirts mm -hmm. where people were like, here's your chair or whatever, you know? So no, and that right there, see, like certain things like that. People, people have merch accounts, right? Mm -hmm. And they put certain things on there that will they think that's really cool. But for them, some people have their own websites, yeah. And they're like, cool. I feel more comfortable playing this over here because the only thing that they're gonna do is send me an email, and then I would just have to take it down, right? Or you know what I mean? Instead of going mm -hmm. on Amazon, they're taking out down the listing and banning right. your account. Right. They rather just go do it on their own website, be more mm -hmm. safe, be more secure, and then drive their own traffic. OK, yeah. so yeah. just think about it that way. There's several you're understanding the whole concept, but like mm -hmm. what's the bigger picture and like where's the opportunity? So you're kind of be more safe and more protected, but leverage Amazon to make, you know, get yourself up to three thousand, four thousand dollars a month on average, because that's definitely going to pay for something. Yeah, pay for something, <laughs> even a thousand like every. And that's another thing, too. Everyone's goals are different. OK, someone just might be happy just, oh, getting an account and then selling their first five T-shirts. Yeah. And then they're like, cool, this, this is fun, but it's not for me. Yeah. And that's perfectly fine. But then you have people that, oh, no, I'm going to sell a thousand t shirts a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? It makes some money. Yeah. Or it's a thousand products because it doesn't have to be t shirts. You pop sockets, yeah. throw pillows. Yeah. Pillows are big, especially during any event right now. Like if you go to Costco, if you go to Sam's Club, if you go to a wall, wherever you're going to grocery shopping or doing some shopping, you're going to see throw pillows in a bucket. And they're like, here, it's Halloween, spooky Halloween, throw mm -hmm. pillows. So, and just ideas everywhere. Yeah. You know, you were talking about everybody's goals are different. I actually like to talk about this in reference mm -hmm. to influencer. And obviously it works across the streams. But like, you know, we talk a lot about like, oh, people are making $10,000, $14,000 a month doing Amazon influencer. And that's amazing. Like, I love mm -hmm. that. And also, like, if your goal is to pay for your Amazon bill every month, like, that's where you start, right? Like you, and then you stack and you build, but like your goal might not be a thousand shirts or a thousand dollars a month in influencer. It's just like, Hey, if I can make it to this, like, I think it's so important to call out that not everybody is trying to, 
make full-time income. Some of this is a hobby, some of it's mm -hmm. side hustle. Some, and you really like for any one of the programs, you can kind of make it mm -hmm. what you want it to be. It can mm -hmm. be like the thing that makes you a couple hundred dollars a month, or it can be the thing that like, you know, you're doing five to $12,000 a month in mm -hmm. merch, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's so interesting. No. And, and, and like, let's see, like a reference back. I used to work at Kmart when I was like 16 in high school nice. and, uh, I used to I get paid every two weeks and I worked like, you know, three, four times a week, sometimes yeah. five. If I can pick up some extra hours, I'm cool. Uh -huh. I know what I mean? Uh, my permit is, only allows me to work a certain amount. I'm like, but you no, know, no one has to know about this. Let me work. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and then, but the thing, the thing is, it's like, I was like, I, it all went to my cell phone bill, car insurance and saving mm -hmm. money to buy my first car. And then my favorite Chinese food. And I was like, cool, happy. I'm good. Like, I'm good. Yeah, like, I'm not sure how long this is going to last, but I'm good. Yeah. And then you just start to realize as you, you know, start to get older, it's like taking the same concept of mm -hmm. starting off with like, okay, maybe this can pay for my yep. car payment or pay for mm -hmm. my car insurance or my utility bill or put food on the table. And then you start to do that. Okay, cool. I'm doing that now. What else can I do? And then, yeah. you know, step, little stepping stones and yeah. going. And um, I, I compare it to that too. It's just like, because it's just, that's real life. That's, yeah. that's real, sh that's real stuff that's happening day to day. And it gives you time to like learn the system, learn the uh -huh. program, learn how to find the niches, to do the product mm -hmm. research, whatever the case is that you're stepping into, maybe like maybe alleviate some of the pressure that I think sometimes we put on ourselves to like, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who's been doing this for one, two, three years, mm -hmm. seven years. Right. And it's like, well, I should be able to hit that. All right, well, let's learn, like, let's mm -hmm. get there, but you know, let's step into it one thing at a time. Yeah, no, I think it's, that's a, that's a good talk. It's a, that's a never, that's never a bad talk because I feel like that can relate to somebody that's maybe struggling with something or mm -hmm. they're doing really good. And they're just like, okay, like, how can I uh, revamp myself to understand like, okay, this is how I did it. And I want to do this, like, mm -hmm. you know, take it to the next level. Like I'm making, I'm making a hundred dollars. Now I want to make $200 and making $200 or I'm making $2,000. Now I want to make 3000. So yeah. it apl applies to everyone. Yeah. Okay. Before we go, mm -hmm. I want to chat about Q4 mm -hmm. because we're, we're looking down the barrel. We've got like five days when we're recording this until Q4 hits. Um, you said something the other day about merch specifically that I think gave a lot of the influencers who either have or haven't been in the Amazon space for a long period of time about the testing that Amazon does or the things that Amazon moves around in the merch space. Mm -hmm. Would you talk to that just for a minute about, cause we have a lot of like in the Amazon influencer space specifically with your overlap, you're seeing a lot of this too, mm -hmm. but like they're doing a lot of testing. People are seeing like a downward trend for tricks, clicks and conversions. What kind of things have you historically seen around the Q4 time period in the merch space. Yeah, no, uh, let's, let, let me get started on this one. <laughs> uh, you get pissed off. You get pissed off at a lot of stuff. So it, um, it, they seem to always break stuff. Is gonna, I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen again next year too. Um, <laughs> right before Q4, it happens every year. Um, there's times with Amazon merch where, where you know, I, I think what sold close to, I wanna say, I, I, me I messed with a lot of the pricing on my stuff, but there was one day it was like close to $1,000 for the day with Amazon nice. merch. Right. And it, it hit like a, a big number, 800 to a thousand, it went roughly around there, 800 right. to a thousand, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And th that day, okay. It did. It was on track to have, it was cyber Monday. I was on track to do the best day the next day. And all of a sudden I wake up in the morning. It was like, I had like three sales. I'm like, wait up, what's going on? And I'm like, hold on. And I, and I look, I go look at my top sellers from the previous day and then the BSRs are wiped. So the, the no. best seller, so the ranking was uh, unranked. So it was basically it was ranking and then they took it out. So what they did was <laughs> remove the catalog. That's what they did. And the, the ranking was, it was there. Like it was, it was, it was doing it. And yeah, it was, it was, you know, all my ranking was gone. I was like, dude, you cannot do this. I, I spent, I spent money to get these on the, the front page and, and like at the end of the day, they can do whatever the hell they want. But yeah. they they took the ranking out, so my ranking was disappeared. So that means that customers couldn't find my product when they were searching it. So that's why my sales were gone. And I was like, "Dah, dude, what the heck?" <laughs> and that that happened that first year, and then they did it again the second year. 
Okay. And they did it again a second year. It was right before Q4. I was like, dude, you can't do that. What the heck? Yeah. So you can see the BSR just disappears. Like if you're looking at using any type of BSR charts or anything like that, mm -hmm. just to look at the sales history, the analytics, yeah. it's gone. It's gone for like a few days and then they bring it back. I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. And then you'll spend like probably that one product I'll probably spend like, you know, a thousand dollars on advertising because it just, and then just, it just disappears and it's gone, but their ratings and stuff and all that stuff are still there in the reviews. But, uh, then after that, there was a year for the, like the COVID stuff that really couldn't do anything right? because what they did was close, close the facilities. Right. So it was a really, it was weird. They closed it. I think they closed it that one month. And my mindset was when they opened back up, uh, I had it. So I paused all ads because it was like, everything yeah. was like, like messed up where like shipping times are out two months, three months. Ooh. And I'm just like, you know what? I was like, all right, what am I going to do here? So I'm just like, you know what? Let me just focus on some other stuff that I'm working on and trying to get those numbers up over there. So like KDP and just you know, YouTube and stuff and getting yeah. some more content out for people. Let me double down and do the most content right now. And, uh, or, and then, you know, provide value and then, you know, obviously create different books. Um, so the, when they announced, okay, this is my mindset too. So when they announced, Oh, we're going to, we're opening merch back up the next day and shipping times will be back to normal within mm -hmm. that week. So I was like, okay, cool. Time to turn on all ads. Let me get ahead of this. Oh, Let me start yeah. ranking all my products. So they're, they're still ranking. They didn't, so that's one thing too. They didn't uh, take, remove the BSR. Uh, that, that, that hurt, that hurts a little bit. You're like, yeah, yeah. That, that confused me right there. I was like, <laughs> I think it's messing with my emotions. I need to take a step away. <laughs> So, yeah, so they did that. And once they did, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. Just announced like, okay, we're, your, your listings are going to be pushed more to the top again and everything's good. Mm -hmm. I was still making, I was still making sales, but it wasn't as much because of the shipping times were pushed out a lot. Yeah. So once that happened, then I just, you know what, let me get the money going. Let me, let me lose, you know, uh, you know, in profit this month, this month with pushing more ads to get my products back up to the first page. And yeah. then they started ranking back to normal and started making sales again. So it just, Certain things like my biggest takeaway from a lot of that stuff is just there's always going to be okay, some bad is supposed to happen. Like, but your thing is how are you going to react to it and how are you going to turn the negative into the positive and make the best of it and make it work? And then I think if you apply that to life in general, mm -hmm. you'll have fun wherever you, whatever you do. <laughs> and I, that's just the way it is. It's always been a big thing of mine. Just try to make the best out of the situation and mm -hmm. then you'll get through it sooner or later. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, I'm going to start calling it Amazon anxiety, like riding this roller coaster of like, if you're making your money on somebody else's platform, there is some level of like, not some, there is a lot of what you're doing that is controlled outside of what you can control. Uh -huh. Whether you're a seller, an influencer, you're doing merch, like ultimately a lot of it sits within the Amazon purview of control. Um, gives you an Amazon anxiety, but you know, ultimately like I, you know, I'm sure that you've heard this a lot in merch and of course an influencer, we're hearing it and FBA sellers have been hearing this for years about how every program is saturated, like pick your conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, I just think about like, to your point, like looking at it in the positive light, like Amazon grows year over year mm -hmm. and each of these programs grows year over year. And so while it might not be the wild west of 2012, when you could launch any program on Amazon and it would immediately sell and you didn't have to pay for ads or whatever else, like the programs exist, they grow, you pivot, you learn along and you continue to make money. It's just, oh. you have to have a longer term perspective on it sometimes than just Q4 when they take away your BSR or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the scenario is, but it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a wild ride. One thing too, just keep in mind, it's like, I was my Q my Q1 for like the last five, six years was always better than my Q4. It's just mm -hmm. because of the trends that I was always on. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind too. Like everyone's sales are going to be different. Yeah. But then over the years, as I started focusing more on like um the evergreen or just mm -hmm. designs that sell and evergreen meat, it can be anxiety that like you talked about anxiety. That anxiety niche, right? That sells all year long. That's an yeah. evergreen niche. Mm -hmm. And just focusing more on that because when Q4 comes like all my consistent sellers are going to be selling them because they're gift, they're gifts. You know what I mean? So it just, it doesn't have to be a Christmas design. It can be a fishing design. It can be an anxiety design. It can be a mental health design. It can be anything like that. 
and it's going to make sales because there's just going to be a boost in people buying gifts for people and yeah. for the holidays. Yep. So. I like it. Well, RJ, thank you for joining me. Super excited. I've got your YouTube link here. So if you guys want to find RJ, I'm going to link to a couple of his things down below as well, talking about like product research and some of the other things that we've talked about. But I appreciate you being willing to hop on and chat about this for the influencers. Yeah. No, I, I really appreciate it too. And you created an awesome tool, by the way, Thank that, you. I, that I love. I've uh, I've actually created a, um, I'm going to plug you in because I created, I've <laughs> actually uh, used the tool to where I've created a few videos and they consistently sell over day, every day. And then I've actually created vi videos where they're selling five, six times a day. And then sometimes even 10. Yeah. And uh, I think, I think the best, I think it was like 15 products sold in one day from one of the um, products I use researching with influencer food. That's so. amazing. Well, this fall, I can't wait to show you like once we have some of the new things coming out that will like continue to help make that like easier and easier so that you can mm. continue, like you were talking about in merge product research, right? Like it's really the key to success on Amazon, wherever you are, merch, seller, influencer, like being able to do the right kind of product research is like make or break. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining me and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for having me on.